All right, so let's run through the idea of complete solutions with a little motivating example. So I have here a matrix times a vector equals a vector. Are you with me on that? Um, and I should probably check my numbers one more time just so we don't get weirdness. Okay, cool. All right, so now in order to solve, what's your, what's your step for solving things like this? You guys already actually know how to do most of this. I just want to highlight one thing here. So how do I start these? What do you do? Use an augmented matrix. Yeah, hell yeah. Just take your matrix, augment that sucker, do some row reduction. So I'm going to have 1, 3, 1, 2 augmented by 1, 2, 6, 4, 8 augmented by 3, and 0, 0, 4, 2, augmented by one. All right, so let's do just a little little, little baby row reduction here. Uh, what should I be aiming at first? The two in the second row? Yeah, you'd, normally you'd aim at the zero in the third row, but that, that done already aimed itself. So let's aim at this two here. So what's my step gonna be? I'm gonna do the new row two, right? is going to be what? The old row two minus two times row one. Perfect. So I'm going to write two times row one down here in the margin or minus two times row one. So that's going to be minus two, minus six, minus two, minus four, minus two. And then we're just going to go ahead and do this thing. So I'm going to leave my top row alone. So I got one, three, one, two, augmented by one. I've got my bottom row that I left alone. And my middle row is now going to be what? Good. Zero, zero, two, four, one. Okay, next thing. What you up to next? What you got for me here? Anybody? Have you all wandered away from the computer and or died? Is my sound on? The second one. The second um, what? You said and or died. I said the second one. <laughs> I hope not. Um, got it. I, I kind of want to get rid of that four in the last row. Or Perfect. Five. Yeah, we should target this here four. Right, we're trying to get this thing to have as many zeros in this lower triangle as kind of possible, right? Um, so I'm already noticing that I have a pivot here at one. I have another pivot here at two, and it looks like I'm probably going to get a third pivot here. You guys notice I'm short a pivot? Why am I short a pivot? Because we're mapping into uh, four dimensions into a three dimension. Yes, absolutely. Because you're trying to cram four dimensional space into three dimensional space you're gonna lose some stuff along the way, at least one dimension worth. It is possible that I would end up with two free variables here. I don't think that's gonna happen, but that's possible. I definitely have one. So what's my row reduction step for that third row? I'm gonna do the new row three is row three minus what? Two row two. Perfect. We're going to take away two row two. So I'm going to write twice row two down under here. Zero, zero, minus, oops. I'm going to write down minus two row two. Minus four, minus eight, minus two. Uh, and then if I was smarter, I would have, oh, wait, hang on. I learned a new, oops, that's the wrong button. 
we're going to take that whole thing. We're going to paste that puppy down here. And then we're going to erase our third row. Oops, this pen still doesn't have an eraser on the other end. I'm not sure that saved any time. What do you guys think? Did that save any time? On my calculations, about four milliseconds. Perfect. Excellent. All right, so I got triple zero, minus six, and minus one. Y'all, all y'all with me with that? Okay, so what is that last equation? What does that last equation tell you? The last guy is one sixth. Good. So uh, let's see. So I'm looking for like a vector x, y, z, w, right? You guys with me on that? If I think about that original x vector, right, it had to be four dimensional. I was picking it up and dropping it on this thing. So this is kind of x column, y column, z column, w column. And so I'm going to get this picture where I've got, all right, so that means minus six w is minus one, which really means w is one sixth. Now, if I take a look at this second equation, right, that second equation tells me something. And a little bit of algebra will get you to that is Z is also a sixth. I just have it written down on a piece of paper here. Don't, don't sweat it. And then this last equation is the one that gets a little wild for me. You guys with me on that? That last equation is going to tell you that X plus 3Y plus, and now I get it to put a Z in here, so plus a sixth, and then I get two W's, so that's a, let's not be stupid, Joe, that's two sixths, and this is equal to how many sixths? Six, six. Good. All right, so then we can maybe play whack-a-mole with sixths here. Okay, and now it feels like something's real bad wrong here. What is it? What's wrong? You got two yeah. variables and one equation. What are you doing, yes. Joe? Exactly. What are you doing? What am I doing? What in the hell is happening here? And why is it so confusing? The good news is it doesn't have to be confusing. The bad news is it does have to have infinitely many solutions. So the good news is that when there are two variables like this, this represents a free variable, right? We were all on board with that. Pick something for it, I don't care what. I'm gonna pick, right? This is me making a choice. I'm gonna pick Y is zero. Because frankly, Y's got a three on it. I don't wanna deal with any of that shit. You guys with me? What does that mean X is gonna be? A half. Good. Oops, I guess that should technically be blue. Oops, that's eraser. That should be blue because that at least was not a choice, right? Once I made the choice of picking X, Y was zero, that forced X to be a half. Okay, so now let's go answer a slightly different question, which is, is that my complete solution? So I'm going up here and I'm saying, all right, so all told, that meant, sorry, let me come back down here. That meant that my solution was X was, and then I need to put my variables in here. So it's a half and zero and a sixth and a sixth. Why are you shaking your friggin' head at me, Jordan? Because it solves completely. That's not solved completely, Joe. What do you mean? I solved it. I found one. Uh, you found one. Yeah. And now I'm done. Circle. We don't care that there's infinitely many solutions. Oh. You mean one isn't very many out of infinitely many? 
<laughs> no, no, it's infinitesimal, in fact. Oh, shit. All right, let's go figure out where the rest are. Okay, so this thing is what is called a particular solution. Okay? So this is one solution. Now, the beauty of linear algebra tells me that I know this one solution goes to that value that I started with, 1, 3, 1. Right? Now, anything else that goes to that value 131 is going to have to be the particular solution I found plus something that goes where. Let me rephrase that. So I think that the complete solution X looks like a particular solution plus something here. I'm going to call this vector n for no reason at all. And then I'm going to think about it. I'm going to think about it. I'm going to be like, all right, so if I do a times x particular plus this vector n, that's a x particular plus a n, right? Now, this thing here is supposed to be b. I know this thing's b because that's how I found x particular, right? So this is the vector b I was looking for plus a n. Now, I was trying to find another solution, right? So I was thinking to myself, this thing here is supposed to give me b. But when I did a to it, I got b plus something, which tells you that this something here has to be what? zero good this sucker here has to be the zero vector which means that once you've found a particular solution you can find all the solutions by adding things that go to zero this n here has got to be in the null space of a now i'm going to introduce a real wacky symbol here because it's fun so the complete solution is going to be the particular solution that you find mega plus the null space. Now, this the mega plus is kind of a weird thing. So I want to talk about that for just one second. What does mega plus probably mean here? Why am I doing this? What, what category of thing is x particular? A vector. Good. That's a vector. What category of thing is the null space of A? So it's null, but it's also a matrix. Damn it. It's null, <laughs> but it's also <laughs> a vector. Damn it. <laughs> uh. A zero. Damn it, that's the null part. <laughs> you're right on it. All right, so you're so close. It's the null space of A, which is null and also... Zero? <laughs> still the null part. <laughs> it's a null space, which is null and also a... Space? Space, thank you. So the problem here, right, is that I couldn't write a regular plus sign between a vector and a space because that doesn't make any sense. Oh, okay. Right, so this thing means it's this vector and any member of this space. Does that make sense? So I need to go find my null space here, and then I'll write down what I mean by this. So what's my null space in this in this example? So I had my, I, and I claim I've already done most of this work, right? So I had my augmented matrix right here. I'm just gonna grab this thing. I'm gonna drop it down here because I need to find the null space. I'm just going to dump 
Oops, this pen still doesn't have an eraser on the end. I'm gonna dump those and augment by zero instead. You guys recognize that the road reduction steps would be exactly the same? Yes, no, maybe. Okay, if you go through the row reduction steps, when you're multiplying stuff by zero and adding it together, you're still gonna get zero on the right-hand side. So if you augment a matrix by zero and then do row reduction, it'll still be augmented by zero. Yeah. Um, so if you're solving your particular solution, when you get to the end, you could just say like, okay, so I got this particular thing. And also let me just drop all those augments, put zero in there, and then, then that's gonna tell me where my null space is. So looking in here, what's this last equation tell you? W is zero. Perfect. That tells you W is zero. Second to last equation tells you. Z is zero. Z is also zero. Top equation tells you X plus three Y is zero, right? So is Y is one and X is negative three. Perfect. So we can pick, right? Y is one, X is negative three. Why wouldn't I pick Y is zero? X would be zero? Yeah, then X would be zero. I'd find out the zero vector goes to zero. Duh, it always goes to zero, right? That's a granted. You can always assume that a matrix is gonna take zero to zero. That's how they work. There's nothing else they can do. All right, so what this means is that I found that my null space of A is the span of the single vector, negative three, one, zero, zero. You guys all on board with that? And that means that my particular solution looks like X is my particular vector, uh, which I'm just gonna grab from right here. So that's just my particular vector that I found earlier. Plus, and here I get to put scalars times my vectors. So I'm gonna put C1 times negative three, one, zero, zero. Is that a super plus sign or is that just normal? Good. So this is a regular plus sign because I have envisioned any member of my null space as a scalar times the one vector that forms the basis for that space. If I, if I had two vectors, I would have C1 times the first vector plus C2 times the second vector. If I had 10 vectors, I would have C1 times the first one plus C2 times the second one plus C3 and so forth, right? And then the C1 here is what's giving you infinitely many solutions, right? Because that scalar can be anything. And this is the complete solution at the end here. It is the particular solution we found plus an entry out of the null space or plus a vector out of the null space, an arbitrary vector out of the null space. Does that make sense? Okay, any questions on this whole process? It's not as involved as it seems, right? You start solving for your particular solution. When you get someplace, that particular thing goes in your hand, then you take your result, go find the null space, Take those, cram them together, done. Cool.